nice to get to see you again. I'm hoping that we'll fill out our, our front row as uh, traffic's bad, maybe. Uh, so if you guys are planning to move around a whole bunch tonight, that's okay. If you guys are planning to move around a whole bunch tonight, I know that you guys have kind of some seating arrangements. We're going to go three years from Gloucester, then Holst, then Handel, and then maybe Holst again, if there's time. Sorry? Yeah, so uh, three years from Gloucester, Holst, and then Handel, and then uh, maybe Holst again. Am I missing a piece? Is there another one that you guys are performing uh, soon? We had the overture for the Candide. To Candide. But Have you practiced that yet? No. You read it? Okay, yeah. Did we? Because I remember playing it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. We played it once. Yeah. Yeah, see? Let me just see, because maybe I do. I mean, it's gross. I only have oboe parts. A couple? Okay. <laughs> So let's quickly uh, do a, a five styles inventory. We talked about doing this last week and then we, we didn't end up doing it. Uh, so you guys have the five styles, default, staccato, tenuto, agogic, and marcato, right? Yep. Okay. You call it tenuto, not legato? Okay. Uh, let's take the first five notes of B flat scale and do one of each. What order? Can't hear anything. <clears throat> so. I have had, I don't know what it is that I woke up with today, but there's something that is just killing my throat. Uh, this morning with my, my kids, we did a totally silent rehearsal, which was really fun, uh, but I also had posters on the wall that I could point to, and I think if I pointed at that, like, Sweden doesn't mean anything to you, so I'm not gonna point. Uh, I'm sorry that I'm, I'm gonna be quieter tonight. Uh, I'll do my best, but apologies. So, five styles inventory, let's do Four on each pitch for the first five notes of the B-flat scale, four defaults, then four staccatos, four legatos, agogic, marcato. Sound good? <laughs> I think we might have different ideas. So the first, like, concert B-flat will be default, concert C will be staccato, Concert D will be legato. Okay. Uh, two, three. Yeah. Okay. All right. Interesting. Uh, we didn't do it last week. Has it been a while since you've done this? Okay, so this is a little new. Fascinating. Let's try it again. We know what to do though, yes? Okay. I'm not going to conduct you this time. Just take it up the five notes and listen to each other. Unify. Two, three, default. <laughs> First one, I disagree. Staccato. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, legato is the easy one, right? That's the one that's going the best. Second best was marcato, and marcato I could feel the triplet subdivision going one and two and three and four. And that was great. Staccato means. Staccato means. Half. Half. Yeah. So what we're hearing with staccato 
is very different interpretations of what that means. Mostly the higher your instrument is, the shorter you're playing it, and the bigger your instrument, the bigger you're playing it. We all have to come together on pull, pull, pull. Let's try it again. All five styles. Be a little more particular to your own hearing. Two, three, and four, and Much more weighted. Length? Same. Length is the same. Yeah. Let's do it again. All five styles. Two, three, and a four, and. Talk to you guys last week about the microscope thing. No. no? Okay. Uh, how, who does microscopes on like a regular basis? Does anyone have like a, a yeah a sciencey job? What do you do? That sounds super fun. That sounds super. Fun. And what do you do? That sounds dangerous. <laughs> okay. Uh, yours might be dangerous. But you didn't give us very many details. You say E. coli. I wouldn't want to do it. Um, so the rest of us, probably sometime in high school, we did microscopes, right? The slower it is, the more zoomed in your microscope is, and all the more details you're going to see. Where you're a little bit ragged, those are going to become really obvious. Let's take it really slowly. Get your subdivision going inside the head, and get as tight and unified as possible. Two, three, and four. <laughs> default, you can tell some people are, are holding on a little too long, right? Three quarter length with a space. Two, three, and four, and. and the Mercado aren't that different, right? Some people are taking the agogic a little bit too short and leaving a little too much space. Just agogic and Mercado. Two, three, and a four, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four. One, ta, two, ta, three, ta, four. Yeah, now the note length is right. And then what happens to the front of the note for Mercado compared to agogic? Much stronger. Much stronger, yeah. Uh, with my little kids, I have them do an assignment. Uh, have you guys ever used TE Tuner? Do you know what this is? It's like $6. Buy it. For real, like, just, just go buy it. If you have a phone, just do it right now. Uh, it has this thing on it where you can record your own, uh, record yourself playing, and it does a live um, sound wave analysis. 
I'll show you. Hello. And so their assignment, their articulation assignment, is to play this. And the front row is going to get the benefit of this. Will you play your uh, Agogic and Mercados together? And, and you guys will just see it. Ready? Everybody, Agogic and Mercado. Two E and a three E and a four E and a. <laughs> Like if you're actually making a difference in your articulation. And when you look at this, it might have sounded a little bit like you were making one, but it doesn't look like a huge difference. See if you can make a bigger change between the and the and get a, a clearer difference. Agajika Mercado. Two, three, and four. Now you heard a bigger difference that time, yeah? Okay. So that's the kind of thing when we do these exercises that you've got to be really cued to. Uh, we haven't tuned yet. We're, we will shortly. Go to three years from Gloucester, and we're going to run it, run it through a little bit. But this is the application of your exercise just now. Okay. Some nice moments in there. Where did you notice uh, you found yourself thinking about articulation? Right after I said it. And for how long afterwards? Not very long. Uh, so it's 17. And uh, so starting at 17, think about the difference between your defaults and your staccatos. Some of us are just kind of going, Paul. Oh, and it's, it's quite pretty. It's not that you're playing badly, but can you play more unified? 17, we pick up in the solo. was much stronger, uh, articulation-wise. At 33, you got quarter rest, two eighths and a quarter. The first two 
Eighth notes are what style? What style would the two eighth notes be at 33? Default. Defaults are connected or separated? You bet. Started to pick up to 33. They're not staccatos, but they have to be clearer than they have been. F. <laughs> that part with the two eighth notes and quarter on 33. One, two. Yeah, that's, that's the right part. Just forte, nice and strong. And one, two. Yeah. Um, can everybody do that rhythm on concert B flat? Just go to 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 and a two. Ready? And. Yeah, that's it. Everybody on air only. And one, two. Good. Everybody on air, unless you've actually got the part at 33. And one, two. Yeah, almost, almost. It's still a little too legato. Again, clear on the tongue. Two. One and a two. Yeah, that's it. So whenever we get that and a two thing, it leans forward, separated, and in this case, because we've done it a couple times, don't forget the next note's on beat one. It comes a little earlier than you expect. Pick up to 33. Everyone's in. That's not how we just practice it. Forte, separated. Yeah. I just got to tell you, I love the way you did ba -bee -da. That was great. We just apply that to two measures earlier. And you got it. Pick up 33. So, I, sorry that we're stuck on this. I, I don't think we've got the rhythm quite right there. Just that group. To to to. One, two, ready, now. Yeah. So you have it written on beat one there, yeah? Again? Two, one, and a two. Better. It, it's not very confident, like you're not sure where it is. Again? One, and a two. Yeah, now you've got it. Now bring back the, the forte and the air and the tonguing and all that. We'll get it. We'll get it. Everybody pick up to Tuba? Yeah. Great, let's take a tuning note before we play the second one.
please play your very first note of measure 99? Yeah. Think about the kind of breath you're going to take. And... <sighs> breath together. I know Kevin talks about the exercise breath a lot. Let's do that same breath. Ready? Good. Uh, and altos, you play on two. You can play that note if you didn't. Right? Uh, sing that note. Play that note again. Last week I had you do some, like play a note, play a random note, back to that note, right? We're gonna add the singing step to that. Play it, sing it, play it, random, play it. Let's see if that works. And play it. Sing it. That's nice. Play it. Two beats before that note, please. And set that as your goal. And yeah, I think we've got it now. A little bit clearer at the beginning. And yeah, that's nice. Beginning of the movement. Last week I'd given you. Uh, too many pages. Last week I'd given you a, uh, a little handout about tuning and making things just intonation. Uh, I'm not sure where your ear training's at, but do you remember what you're supposed to do if you were the third of a major chord? Third of a major chord goes down. Third of a minor chord goes up. That's the biggest one that you've got to deal with. The other one is if you find yourself as the seventh of a chord, do you know how to find out if you're the seventh? If you're the one that makes the chord sound tense. Right, if we have one, three, five, and it's all good, and then you come in with seven, you're the seventh. And so you have to bring it down a lot. Okay, if you're the tense one. Okay, from the beginning. It's so easy, think about tuning. <laughs>
really pretty moments in that. That went better than last week. Probably because we tuned first instead of after. Yeah, good. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. From the beginning, please. Can I hear everyone who's not a French horn? Just for a moment. Probably the first eight measures or so. together. Make sure we breathe right in time. <laughs> That's the worst one yet. Uh, one, two. When you get the moving parts, bring them out just the littlest bit. Now take all of that and cut it in half dynamically. Bring the horns back in. And horns, uh, you start with a mezzo piano crescendo. I would interpret that a little bit stronger uh, at the beginning and then crescendo a little bit more. And everybody else, take your mezzo piano crescendo and interpret it as a little bit less and crescendo a little bit less. Uh, from the top. That's beautiful, nicely done, much better balance. The only thing left in this movement that I, I really wanted to address with you, uh, Kevin's talked about three loves one, but what about when three and one get married? Has he told you that story? Well, three gets pushy, okay? That's what happens, and maybe, is anybody here married? Just me, okay, well, let me tell you. <laughs> Things to look forward to. So, when three is tied to one, three has to push. So if, uh, where we're just about to come up to clarinets, you get this all the time. Uh, when you have three, two, three, you have to make a, a, an intensity motion across the bar line. It's not just a rhythmic device, it's an expressive one as well. So we're gonna see this start to happen for lots of you coming up. Let's start where we just left off and see if you can bring that in. So three loves one, and when they get married, pushy, okay? That's the new thing. Pick up to 83. One. <laughs>
think we mentioned this last week, you may want to mark it. In the last three measures, uh, those of you with dotted half notes that are not tied, treat them a little bit more like a default note and definitely separate them so they're clearly articulated. Okay. Uh, we spent lots of time on that. Let's go to Holst Movement 3, which gives us a chance to do the same things as Fights of Wembley anyway. Beautiful playing. Yeah. <laughs> this is the this is the first section today, apparently. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. If you want to and not forcing you to stay here. Well, let's just see how it goes. Have you rehearsed this much? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. So it'll go great. I'll sort of go like one and two. Maybe you mean a whole year of high school. Okay. It's pretty standard. I think a lot of you have played this before, right? This is not your first time. Is this anybody's first Holst? Nice. That's pretty sweet. Yeah. Everybody remembers the first time. All right. Here we go. Uh, Movement three. <laughs> Are you sure it's not your first time?
Fantastic. Uh, <clears throat> please start at 397. Uh, with half no pickup if you have it. Uh, there's a few wrong notes. I expect you guys are sorting those out, yeah? Okay. Uh, please play 397 like the most beautiful, romantic chorale, legato, smooth. I just want to hear something different. In four, very slow. Half no pickup. And one, two. <laughs> fast this will be one two three four one and two and three four it's totally different and one and two It works really beautifully because now you're hearing some of the harmonies that are in there that are a little bit more interesting than uh, I think we give it credit for when we just go fast. The other thing that I wanted you to pay attention to, uh, which you did much, much cleaner, is your releases all together. Very good that time. The other time, a little shaky. Uh, trumpets, please play 447. Do you have numbers like that? Yeah, you have ever measure number? 447? It's like seven from the end. To, 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 to. Just hear that, please. Two, three. Yeah, nice. Uh, can you make it sound a little bit more like an angel herald, like that kind of ringy bell tone trumpet? One, two, and three. That's really good. Uh, French horns, you had that a little earlier. Can you match that? Uh, where's that for you, horns? Uh, 413? Well, 409. That's a little bit closer to what, what they have. 409. Two. Yeah, and one, two, one, a two. Yeah, let's just uh, uh, get that trumpet sound back in your ear. To, 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 to. One, two, one. Yeah, that's almost there. Just maybe like 15% more. A uh, little bit more edge on the front. One. Yeah, that's much clearer. Yeah, nice work. Okay, everybody back to 397. So, we're not going to go that slow. What we will do, though, is try to pay closer attention to some of the details that are in this section. Here we go. One, two, one. shame on me, but uh, altos, tenor, clarinets, and flutes, uh, that same figure that we learned in the trumpets, we have to do it the same way. Right. Same spot, 
again, going back to the word of the day, all that default articulation, right? Playing in a British March style, pretty, I don't want to say clipped, but, but very stiff upper lip, right? Not very wet, not very, not very connected, except for where he wants it to be. Uh, <clears throat> Probably best to just do the same spot again. It's getting so, so much better. And one, two. <laughs> Section's great. Uh, before four thirty-seven, please. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Measures with pickup. Uh, pick up to four twenty-eight. Yeah, it's the last time we get that quarter rest half note pickup. Uh, articulation style here is legato. Yeah, legato tenuto, right? And then we have an immediate switch at 437 to what style? Agogics and defaults, right? And in cut time, those half notes are like quarter notes would be. So the half notes are all default style with a uh, one quarter length or quarter of the beat length separation. So let's hear a huge difference between there. Pick up to 428. And. <laughs> Trombones and baritone and euphonium and barry sax in the last five measures. Uh, that's some of the nicest playing I've heard on that. Usually, that's where the section goes, hey, it's the end of the tune and he can't fire me anymore, so they just like go for it, right? And that was really tasteful playing, so nice. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's see where we're at. Oh, we're right on time. Okay. Any concerns in that movement before we leave it for a bit? Just move on. Okay. Uh, handle. How are you?
sorry, no tuba part. Okay. Okay. Uh, right, so we're, we're getting euphoniums up here, right? Yeah, right now. Yeah. <laughs> soloing, you'll, you'd probably stand, but you can sit in reverse. Today is the ultimate stander. I am. I really am the best stander. You're trained in standing. Truly. Apparently. That's good news. I even have a phony heart. Do they make special baritones for standing or sitting? Well, for marching. I'm in Las Vegas. Is that the Valkyrie one? Yeah. Oh. That always seemed the worst one to just like, oh, like pipes of steel. Okay, so I really I really don't know if I understand what his plan is for antiphonal euphonium. Uh, he said he wants to do like back and forth, but I don't I don't You're not really sure how like separate parts. You like the flute section? It's very Maybe after any note longer than a quarter note switch, like I don't know. That seems like a lot. I was thinking of the rest of it definitely be easiest. If you do it uh, like where each phrase kind of splits up, that makes it a little more conversational. Yeah, I've got like two and talking to each other instead of just taking turns. So, I don't know. Let's try it on the rest and then see how it goes. Not cool or empty. We'll try more things. Not cool or empty enough. Just on the other hand. Okay. Okay. Who's going first? All right, here we go. Thanks for your patience. Sorry, I forgot how slow it is. Balance-wise, how is it feeling right now? You are a ray of sunshine today. <laughs> okay. Um, well, it's not. It's not as well as we played it last week, I think. Agreed? Yeah, okay. Um, how... How much reminders and, and reteaching do we need, or just like, like just click and say we could go, we could do better? Just like Thanos snap, and it's like, 
All the mistakes, they're half gone. Okay, here we go. From the top. Group section is half gone. Well, they, they are actually. <laughs> <they're>, <laughs> Wherever you have that, please play it in the right spot, but only play that. Don't play the long note after, don't play any other eighth notes, just play the T T T ta ta. Okay? Uh, starting in six. Three and a four. And So what do we really have here? Yeah, call and response. Okay. So everyone who's not calling and responding, everyone who is, yeah. Yeah? Good. Yeah. Yes, Mr. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Oh gosh. It, it's long week. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. Crazy long week. I get it. Six. Fifteen hundred watts? Words. What did you have a big essay do? <laughs> you win. You win. Sing. Six. Three and a four. <laughs> I was like, that guy, not me. You're doing it? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Just wanted to say that was nice. Yeah. Um, who's the horn soloist? I'm not that. Yeah, we're just pointing at that guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, also, beautiful. Beautiful. A little more. Uh, you're going to be the first one that takes over the texture after we leave the euphonium solo. So you've really got to come out strongly so that everyone else feels safe to do so. Okay, it's up to you. You're opening the door. Uh, this is where we started rehearsing a lot last time, at 10, right after the code sign. 10. Nice job with the balance change and coming out of the texture. Excellent.
todas, ¿no? ¿Fue todas, no? Major or minor chord? Do you hear root third and fifth? People are saying no. Does anyone know? Do they have the third? You have? Maybe. Uh, should be F major triad. Does anyone have concert F? Do I have concert C? Concert A? Do we just have concert F and C? Maybe here. Maybe here, okay. Uh, we have a tenor sax, that's concert F. We have a bass clarinet, that's concert F. Ready, sax, concert F. Trombone, C. Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> this is horrible. <laughs> it's not that bad. French horns and clarinets, please. <coughs> Last note. Oh, there it is. There it is. Uh, concert Fs only, that group. Add the concert C. And the third. <coughs> Sorry, so French horns. Um, concert F is your C. And then uh, concert C is your G. So we should have had just a fifth in the French horn. And I heard a third there for some reason. Hear that uh, group again? Just horns and clarinets. Uh, and, and just the clarinets. OK, so that's a nicely balanced major chord, right? And then everyone else has F and C? Yeah. That's going to be a problem for you. <laughs> and I'm looking forward to seeing how you solve it. Oh, yeah. All right, last note, please. Uh, yeah, nice job. So the third came through a little bit stronger. Everyone else brought it down a little bit. That's nice. Last two measures. Yeah, keep listening for that balance in the pitch. Three, and last two. That's pretty. Yeah, nicely done. Uh, concerns, comments? Um, I think the places where we, we missed your entrance most often was at measure 14, after we have all those other solos, and uh, partly that's me, I didn't cue you very well, if at all. Um, if we can make sure that you're, you're very secure coming in there. And then uh, in measure 14, we have French horn, uh, I think that's horn one, maybe horn one and two. Uh, Cornet one and euphonium all together on and a four and a one. And I don't think we've quite lined that up yet. So if we could take just a minute to line that up and then, and then that should be just about it for this piece. Okay. Uh, measure 10, my favorite part. Okay. Still a little stronger on the horn, so much better last time. Measure 10. Everybody, yeah, sorry. Just those people who are they're the ones who have to do the work. Everyone else was great.
that into a D? I guess everyone else is doing kind of the same thing. But it's a weird part of the major. Ask Kevin about that when he gets back. See if that's on purpose. Uh, better lining up. Uh, this time right from measure 13, please. 13, 3, and 4. <laughs> Much stronger, much not stronger, uh, more accurate. Thank you. Uh, okay. Eight ten. That was great. Do you guys feel good about that? Do you like your choices? Okay. Good. Let's move you back to where you're normally at. Uh, let's play Overture to Candide. Done it once? I don't remember playing it once. Oh man, it's great. It's great. Okay. In cut time. A little slower. In cut time. Uh, to make us all feel very secure, if you play on beat one, basses and uh, would be timpani. Very strong. Uh, forte, agaja, got one. Boom. Ba -da -da -da. just to give you an idea of how fast we were gonna go. But this time we won't go so fast. Yeah, okay. Great, great. Uh, so let's, let's take this apart. Uh, if you are playing on beat one in the first measure, please play Everyone else sizzle, okay? And one, two, one, and two, and. Yeah, so 
hopefully we all notice that they only play on one that one time, and every other time they're somewhere else. Right? Uh, let's do the end. Strong. You're doing it right. Just fortissimo. This is Bernstein, like West Side Story, Candy, very, very bombastic. And one, two. <laughs> Yeah, good, thank you. Now you guys sizzle, you guys play. So we, at this point, still aren't bringing in any woodwinds as such, except for bass, no, bass clarinet is sizzling now. Cornets, French horn, and trombones, please. And snare drum. And one, two. <laughs> So we get, and a two, two, and a two, one, and a one, two, three, four, five, six, one. Right? It's just a little different interpretation of the rhythm. And one, two. Yeah, that's much better, much better. One more time. This time, everybody from the top. And if it's good, you'll know because we kept going. Woodwinds. Pray for them. Uh, and one, two. like a freaky circus. Okay, great. Thought much again. I think I think what you need with this piece is familiarity, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Good. All right. You're doing great. You're doing really great. beats long is 2-4. Uno beato. One beat. 2-4 time is in one beat. Uh, I know. Yeah, so we'll have digga digga dot. Bum, ba, ba, ba. Yeah. Measure 46 cut, will be in time. one. It's cut, cut time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a lie. Oh, no. Uh, Right. Just wanted to give you a, sorry, one little piece of advice. Two before 19, forte marcato parts. Uh, you should be quite rude 
in the way you play that. Right? That is, yeah, that's, that's not intended to be kind, beautiful playing. Very character kind of playing. Uh, 14, please. 14, quarter note pickup if you have it. And one, two, one. today? Can I hear 32, please? Can you make the uh, agogic notes very, very... Um, well, just, just ugly. Just, uh, just oh, really ugly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Still in tune, but dirty. Maybe dirty is a better word. Okay. Here we go. 32. One, two, one, and two, and... <laughs> Yes, brass. Woodwinds, less so. <laughs> but yes, brass. Maybe woodwinds, you can remain pretty. It says fortissimo and it's like Yeah. Yeah, so, you, so you're like the tip of the ice pick, but they're the, the, the weight at the back. Yeah, but just the tip of the ice pick. Same spot. The tip of the ice pick lobotomy? Precisely. You and I share a, a very strange sense of humor. Yeah. 32? Great job last time. And one, two. <laughs> is quite pecky. And one, two. should have done the repeat sign. Yeah, nice job. 47, both times. And it's funny, because I, I was just going past, I was like, huh, I wonder why that line is so dark. Whatever. So I'm, I'm running the video camera on this, because uh, one, I want to record my rehearsal so I can get to be better as a teacher, but Two, like, if ever I was gonna try to audition for things, like stuff like this is really good to have on tape. And then I say something stupid, like, oh, I saw a repeat sign and just didn't. <laughs> <laughs> this whole tape is ruined. All right. But, yeah, there'll just be a little click and be like, nothing happened. <laughs> Perfect. Have you seen those videos that are like playing skills zero, but editing skills 100? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll just do that. 47. Both times. And one. <laughs> Okay. 
Thank you. Before 64, please. So this will be second time through. Before 64, one, two, three, four, five measures, please. With two quarter notes pickup. Okay. So two quarter notes before the last three measures of the repeat. Are we all in the same spot? Sure. Best of luck. We'll find out. Let's hope the three two measure all comes in the same place for everybody. And one, two, one. Kevin would want you to play it. Uh, yeah. Okay, maybe we'll just leave it for today. Because this is all for fun anyway. Yeah. Don't stress. 83! Thank God. 83. I will leave those last 30 measures or so to you for another time, and Kevin can fix it. Is this a C? Or a B? This B flat. Okay, I gotta write that in. It's one of those like 11 lot. Ledger lines. It's so many ledger lines. Yeah. Did you know that the ledger lines above the staff uh, also spell face? I've been I've been teaching music for like ten years, and someone came to me and was like, "Oh yeah, it's easy reading ledger lines. It's just face on the lines instead of face on the space." I was like, "Huh? You're in trouble. Oh. You're in trouble. Yeah, yeah." And then in bass, it's the ace G, but hopefully they put your tenor clef or, or treble clef by then. See, that sounded smart. I can leave that on the tape. Okay, 83. This is the pretty part, right? Finally, we get to be legato. Okay. Okay. Big swells, schmaltzy, ridiculous. Go for it. Four one twenty three, please. Four before one twenty three. Yeah. Um, 
Oh, no, then yeah. yeah. I don't have the part. Oh, oh then yeah. Oh. And then, and then transpose. Do that again. Sure, that sounds fine. The rest of this piece sounds like that. Actually, this piece is really pretty. Yeah, okay. It, it's supposed to be. Yeah, okay. Sure. Okay, so then... So then clarinets play the E-flat cues. Sight transpose. There we go. Four before 123, please. Uh, I'm seeing a couple of spots here where we have offbeat notes. Uh, trombones, altos, French horns, you have this quite a bit. Uh, you can be much more present on the articulation for those notes. Right now they get a little bit lost in the texture because there's just so much richness going on. You've got to really poke through. Okay. Here it is. 119. Uh, one, two. <laughs> Closer than last time. I couldn't tell what one was. 129? Ah. No, same spot as before. It's getting better. It's getting better. Just be, just be a little bit more confident with your mistakes and, and we'll all notice them more. Better to do that here than at the show. Same spot, 119. One. So close. Start right on 134. Right on it. 134. One, two. Yeah. Basically how it goes. Okay. We're going to leave that. That was great fun. Candel oh. record? We have no first flutes, therefore there is no flute solo. Never mind, never mind. We don't have any flutes. Is it just like a few bars? It's, there's a lot of flute and it's all first. Like he wrote nothing for second flute. It's all harmony and we have like a million rests. In first and second movement? In the whole In, 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 the, in the whole book. book. Okay. It's like first flute in all the glory and second flute. No, it's good. It's good. Uh, okay. What else have you got? The rest of holes. Okay, well then let's do the rest of holes. That was kind of the plan anyway. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. I remember talking about that now. Uh, so, we have a couple of questions in the second movement. We're going to address those quickly. Uh, start at 231, please. Are you sure? Because that's the 10th measure. 231.
So I have eight measures of rest, uh, with you having a note on, so at 231, There's a whole you have a note on beat one, one, and then eight measures of rest, and then a pickup to 241. So, so it's like, there are 10 measures between those two. Yeah. They're just kind of written weirdly. Only eight measures of rest, is that right? Is that what you have? I have nine, but yeah. You actually, well, I don't have one. Oh, so then, yeah, that's, so that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I think it's fine. I think so, too. Okay. Well, then, let's figure out where else the problem is. Uh, 199? 199. Uh, can anybody tell me what it is that we worked on this, uh, this section last week? No clues. Thank goodness we did it. Um, hearing, the other hearing the other parts, yeah. I believe this was a section where we were talking about uh, making sure that the, the phrasing was going, hearing the other parts and you're locking. Um, let's try it, 199. Uh, one, two, three. <laughs> I, just, I missed you at 204, 203. Okay. There we go. 199 again? Uh, one, two, three. In case you're giving me funny looks. So, mine too. Yeah, you're doing it right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think what it is is just because I'm conducting in two and it says it's in four, just, just some, some, issues back and forth that way. Again, for 199. I'm liking how, how horizontally you're playing. Uh, a lot of the lines are having a lot of shape, and that's, that's lovely to hear. 199. <laughs>
I queued you at the oval queue instead of it at your queue. I'm so sorry. Uh, uh, it feels a little awkward getting into 255, agreed? Yeah. Okay, let's start uh, before that at 241. Our missing parts. And 241. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Last four measures, please. Uh, only if you have staccato eighth notes, only play the staccato eighth notes. Pick up to the last four, starting with the baritone. And one, two, three. Okay, so we missed all the parts. Okay, so what I was hoping to hear was, uh, did, did we find the baritone solo part? Yeah. Great. So yeah, that part, we go ba bi ba ba ba. Yeah, four from the end. Oh yeah, totally do. Oh, okay. Um, okay. I mean, maybe maybe it's not needed. Um, so we should still have the euphonium part, then go bop, 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 and then trombones with that, and then French horn matching that, and then cornet in the cues matching that, uh, and then tenor sax, clarinet, three, four, one, two, and that's it. No bassoon, right? Yeah, no bassoon. So pick up to the last four. Bop, 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 Yes, that's the part. And that's why we're working on it. Okay. So again, pick up with ba ba ba. One, two, and from two, yeah, good. One, two, three. Okay. Um, let's count it. Counting only, out loud. One, two, three, four. Yeah, we should hear and one and. One, two, three. Counting. Counting. Nice playing. So I would like to hear trombone say and one and, French horn say and three and, cornet say and one and. And if we get that much, I'll be really happy. Yeah. What beat they're supposed to start on and what beat they are starting on are different right now. So as long as you come in on and three and, you'll be fine. Right? Yeah, okay. And then we're gonna fix this over here. You're gonna be safe, you're gonna be safe. It's gonna be great. Ready? Uh, one, two, counting only. One, two, three, and one and, and three and, and one and. Right? Yeah? First cornet should. Oval cues? I think because Wilms is really hopeful that you're going to get an oval player still. Well, we kind of had one, and then she was only here once, and then left. Yeah. Um, it's happened multiple times. Maybe, maybe Wilms will say something different, but if, if the oval player is not here, at least play those three notes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you get the random eighth notes, too, in the second last measure. Yeah, that's. So I see the last four measures. You're going one and two and three and four and and then in the second last measure you go and two, two, yeah. So in the second last measure you have the figure we're working on. 
four from the end, you don't. Yet. All right. Counting. And one, two, three. <laughs> one, two, three. Okay, now let's play that. Yeah. All right. So let's let's play that. Ready? One, two, three. Yeah. Creep up. Yeah. This is great fun. I'm enjoying this a lot. All right, one, two, three. Yeah, okay, good. Now they just all have to be exactly the same. So the, the character we're getting out of the low brass, paw, 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 maybe a little bit big for piano, but the shape is right. And then French horn, how many horns are playing it? Just you. You're gonna have to start bullying your section into playing more. Uh, so you gotta match their volume. Okay? And then uh, Wes, you gotta match the same. Go. Optimistically speaking, last time. And one, two, three. Yeah, okay, good. Everybody, last four measures. That was nice. Last four measures. And if that part isn't you, bring it down quite a bit. Okay. And one, everyone last four. One, two, three. Good, very good. Now the last two measures, count it. If you have a whole note, don't play. But last two measures, count what you have otherwise. Two, three, four. Who's got four and one? Oh, that's good news. And it, it actually is good news because it's supposed to decrescendo into nothing. So it's good that you're by yourself. Just you've got to be confident. Right? Here we go. Counting again? That was great counting, by the way. Others could learn from you. <laughs> one, two, three. Good. Let's play that. Again, no whole notes. No whole notes. One, two, three, four. Good. Now just make it really cute. Okay? Like toy box, little dancer type thing. One, two, three, and four. Yeah, and match styles across that. Styles and tone colors as much as you can. Two, three, and four, and. Yeah, that's great. Last four measures. Everyone's in. Whole notes at the end. You gotta be under that. And in tune somehow. One, two, three. Well, the kettle's done. Uh, so I. Are you serious? Oh yes. Yeah, we were working on this for a long time yeah. last time, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah, so I, I think it just needs to come down a little, little softer, and blend a little better, which I register as challenging. Uh, so this afternoon, uh, I got to work with the U of C wind ensemble, and they're playing this crazy saxophone concerto thing. And the saxophone, the soprano saxophone, at the end of the piece has three Fs written, the highest note that the saxophone can play on a soprano saxophone. And the guy is just like, Wah! and and it sounds literally like a tea kettle going off. And then the drums and the little rest go, 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 go. And so he gets to breathe. And he comes in again and does it again. And it's it's like the world is ending. But while the world is ending, the tea kettle is going off. Like, is there a more stressful <laughs> thing than the world is falling off and the tea kettle? It's just, oh god, it's, it's a brilliant piece, but what a horrible ending. Like, I can just imagine the audience at the end of it just being like, ugh. <laughs> anyway, 286. 286, to the end. Apply with That's definitely in the next 266. It's very small. It's very small. 266. Yeah, much better, much better. Okay, 
Uh, we don't have a lot of time left because we wasted a lot on uh, funny stories about saxophones. So, all the way through, top to bottom, first suite for military bands. Oh, Lord. I know. I know. No mistakes. Uh, zero deaths. So, quick review. Uh, key messages from tonight. What, did, what were the things that, that I came in and wanted to work with you on? Yeah, space between the articulations and articulation kind of in general. That was the biggest one right from the beginning. Anything else? Matching styles, yeah. Thank you. Really listening to each other to make sure that this ensemble is coming together in a unified way. That's what we've needed to do tonight. So let's see. We didn't work on the first movement at all. How much can you apply and, and go through right at the end of a, like you said, long week with a, a tiny little essay due and you know, a somewhat more significant thesis? Here we go. Top to bottom. Sight reading, great. Uh, I'm going to start calling you the alternate. It sounds great, and I forgot to track it. That's the nicest thing. So great. Yeah. I love when that happens. It happens to me all the time. Try again. Uh, Kevin did say to me when I, I went for dinner with him if anybody breathes in the fifth measure, they'll die. <laughs> now, it won't be me that does it, but. Where are you supposed to breathe? Uh, after it's done. Like from the beginning until your first rest. That's one breath. In the, like the ninth measure? Yeah. Like take a big breath and then don't breathe. And then take 16 measures off and just like hyperventilate for three of them and then come back down. But you have to make that whole first line. I believe in you. I, my band, uh, the Cochrane Music Society, they rehearse Wednesday nights. I have a 60-year-old tuba player. He did it in one breath. You guys, you can do it. He also didn't think he was going to do it, and then I just gave him a look. And he did it. It was great. Take a bigger breath. Don't play so loud. take to make it? Less volume, more speed? What would it take? How, how far did you get? You all made it past the, the half note where the, the, the tie ends, right? The slur? Nice. Okay, you just have like two extra bars to go. I have... Hmm. You know, the other... The other thing about that phrase, uh, and, and maybe you guys know this, but when you're, when you're driving and then the gas indicator comes on and it says you need to get gas, you know you still have gas, right? <laughs> and you can drive for a while, and if you drive a little while longer, then your car starts like flashing and saying, refuel, and you still have gas. <laughs> You'll be fine for a little bit. And then shortly after that, then you're in trouble. And I think, most of us probably still have a little bit left. Maybe not much, 
but you're already sitting down. If you faint, there's not far to go. <laughs> I'm just saying, just, just try it a, just a little bit more, and I swear you've got it. Bigger breath, get a, a better fill at the beginning, and then control your output. I think the next time I get to see you is at James Fowler High School. Is that right? On okay. yeah. uh, April 8th. No, it's May 8th? May 11th. April 8th is the one at the church. I will see you sometime in the future. Okay. I'm looking forward to it a lot. Uh, thank you guys for two weeks of, of solid rehearsal. Have a great night. Thank you. <laughs>